especially when they got close to Bin Laden. John O'Neill was the FBI counter-terror chief responsible for the investigation into Osama Bin Laden. On August 22, 2001, after claims of a repeated obstruction of his investigations into Saudi funding, O'Neill left the FBI. This document is marked secret and WF, which means it walked its way out of the Washington Bureau of the FBI. It indicates that before the attack of September 11th, agents had wanted to question two members of a very powerful family for their connections to a suspected terrorist organization, Omar and Abdullah bin Laden. But the agents weren't allowed to. O'Neill went on to take a new post as head of World Trade Center security. He would move into his office days before 9-11 and be killed during the attacks. Yeah. I have four children. I've lost friends that, uh, John, yeah. John, uh, my friend from the FBI was killed. John O'Neill, oh, I lost John people too. We, we lost a lot of family members. What did John O'Neill do before he worked in the John, World Trade Center? John was the FBI. Head the of the FBI. FBI. He was yeah. tracking down Osama. fucking... Osama. He was tracking down Osama. Osama. Right? Because the government didn't Osama. listen to him. The government didn't listen exactly. to him. The FBI... Osama. Hold on. Let's. We want to talk call a car to car? The FBI right right fucked up. They knew about the flight training. Yes. That was a fuck up for having these people in our country. We all agree on something. And the important thing is you have to understand I feel what you feel I have lost friends there I feel what you feel that was my our world trade that was our people that fucking sure, died sure. that day at a time when bin Laden was the most wanted man in the world why would intelligence agencies stop their own investigations especially as they were closing in on him Robert Wright and others within the FBI also had their investigations into terrorism stopped prior to 9-11 since August of 1999, I've been working to legally expose the very real and foreseeable Middle Eastern terrorist threats to American citizens at home and abroad. From 1993 to 1999, I was assigned to the Chicago Division's Counterterrorism Task Force. The successful investigation, which was codenamed Vulgar Betrayal, V-U-L-G-A-R, Betrayal, led to the June 1998 seizure of $1.4 million of Middle Eastern terrorist funding. These funds were linked directly to Saudi businessman Yassin Qadi. On October 12, 2001, Yassin Qadi was designated by the United States government as a financial supporter of Osama bin Laden. Larry Klayman of Judicial Watch initially tried to help get Wright's story to the proper authorities. He wanted to come forward long before 9-11. We were taking those steps beginning last summer to do that. The FBI had 30 days to allow that to occur. They violated their own regulations. They covered it up. If you didn't hear me, I went specifically. I called the Attorney General's office just days after 9-11. I said, Dave Shippers and I represent a special agent of the FBI Chicago field office who has years of information about how the FBI did not do its job, did not in any way investigate a meaningful way money laundering in the United States. You're now claiming you want to do this. I'd like to make them available to you, Attorney General Ashcroft. And I was met with a response by Michael Chertoff, head of the criminal division. We're tired of conspiracy theories. Michael Chertoff will later become the head of Homeland Security, the department set up to fight the war on terror after 9-11. Wright was also restricted from telling any specifics about their investigation. Robert Wright was then prevented from working on terror investigations. So what happened to Wright? He was demoted in and around the time period leading up to 9-11. He's working on innocuous, meaningless things. That's what he's doing. Yes. He's a paper pusher. It's because these monies were going through some very powerful U.S. banks with some very powerful interests in the United States. These banks knew or had reason to know that these monies were laundered by terrorists. Uh, and there are very significant potential conflicts of interest in both the Clinton and Bush administration, and in particular this Bush administration, uh, who is as tight with Saudi Arabia as you can get. The president's father used to stay with the bin Laden family when he would go to Saudi Arabia. Former President Bush spent the night in D.C. at the White House on September 10th. We've also learned at NBC that there was a President Bush in the White House during the morning of these events. His father, former President Bush, was actually at the White House the morning of the attack. The next day, elite financiers of the Carlyle Group would meet. 
This global private equity investment firm would profiteer enormously from the wars in the Middle East. At the table were both Bush Sr. and Osama's brother, Shafiq bin Laden. The Bush and bin Laden families had been members since the 90s and would reap the benefits of terrorism coming to America. After 9-11, the company would become public. All, all I do agree with you is on one thing. Fucking Bush and Clinton with their relationship with Saudi fucking yeah, Arabia. Yeah, yeah. I agree oh, with yeah. you. They're kissing their asses like that. Right, that's right, bullshit. Right. Yeah. Because they're sucked up and that family that took off, that's a fucking crime. Exactly. The family Mr. Deedle is referring to is of course the Bin Laden. While all domestic flights were grounded, suspects closest to the supposed mastermind behind 9-11 were allowed to leave on chartered flights. Let's show you some video that was taken exclusively by News Channel 2 eight days after 9-11. That man there is Osama bin Laden's younger brother, Khalil, who had been here vacationing with other family members there on an estate that they owned in West Orange County. Now I guess we can safely say that there were people within the FBI and other agencies who actively protected and aided the alleged terrorists. With all the resources available to U.S. intelligence, you would think that someone within would have detected something. Well, one did. The black operation program Able Danger identified the hijackers prior to 9-11, but the FBI wasn't interested. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, an intelligence officer inside Able Danger, tried to blow the whistle several times. Was the commission that investigated the 9-11 attacks told that lead hijacker Mohammed Atta had been identified in as al-Qaeda operative more than a year before terrorists struck? I'm told confidently uh, by the person who did move the material over that the 9-11 commission received two briefcase size containers of documents. I can tell you for a fact that would not be one one twentieth of the information that, that Able Danger consisted of during the time we spent. Schaefer would also meet with Philip Zelikow, the executive director of the 9-11 Commission. What did Schaefer tell Zelikow? And I'm quoting how I remember saying it. We found, as part of the data run, we found two of the three cells which conducted the 9-11 attacks to include Atta. Schaefer says his unit linked Atta to al-Qaeda leaders, but would not provide any specifics. As to what he did with the information he had, we uh, attempted to, uh, first off, use it operationally. The lawyer said you can't do that. They're, U they're considered U.S. persons. Therefore, at that point in time, we made the determination as a team that we should move this information to the FBI. But he says beginning in September 2000, three meetings he set up with the FBI were each canceled by military lawyers. Despite all of this, the 9-11 Commission would deny it any significance and not include it in the report. Leaving a, a project targeting al-Qaeda as a global threat a year before we we're attacked by al-Qaeda is equivalent to having an investigation of Pearl Harbor and leaving somehow out the Japanese. Schaefer and his team tried to stop the hijackers prior to 9-11, but were blocked. Later, the military would begin a smear campaign against them in order to discredit their findings. A Pennsylvania congressman says there's a smear campaign going on inside the Pentagon, and he wants the defense chief to get to the bottom of it. Republican Congressman Kurt Weldon says Pentagon officials are trying to ruin one of their own who's gone public about a top-secret military intel unit. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, who was the first member of Able Danger to go public, has now been told in writing by the Defense Intelligence Agency that he can't speak to members of Congress or their staff without prior approval. And now a security clearance, which allowed him to deal with classified information, has been pulled. The congressman says Schaefer has been gagged, punished, for speaking up. It's obvious to me this is a clear attempt to silence this guy, but now even more than to silence him, to ruin him as a person and a military officer. I've talked to all the able danger players, and they all agree this is a witch hunt against Tony. It's wrong. It's un-American. It's unacceptable. Pentagon reportedly does not want the public to hear next week's Senate testimony about the former secret intelligence unit known as Able Danger. Two congressional sources have told Fox News that the military is pressuring senators to move the hearings behind closed doors. When the Able Danger hearings were held, Schaefer and others were gagged. Eventually, Schaefer would be able to speak at a whistleblower's hearing. Many of us take seriously our oath of office to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Let me be upfront here. 
I am no Boy Scout. I was not hired as an intelligence officer because I hung out at the science, uh, Christian Science Reading Room. My job is to get information using tried and true intelligence methodologies. According to my legal counsel, until I disclosed the able and danger information, I was a rock star. It was my work as a chief of the of DIA's Special Mission Task Force uh, back in 2000, I mean, in 1998, that I became involved with able danger. My officers and I were working at the cutting edge of technology and DOD black operations. Most of all of my operations and operational records remain classified. With all this evidence, why did the 9-11 Commission and Pentagon suppress valuable information about the hijackers' activities leading up to the attacks?